what's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So let's talk about creating vertical video in Premiere Pro. While most of my video is horizontal, I do have some experience editing vertical videos and I'll share some of my knowledge with you here for Adobe Premiere Pro. And to begin, I'll start by creating a new project. First of all, let's talk about workflow. We'll start by creating a sequence that's the correct size. There are two main sizes for vertical video. I'll head across to the settings tab at the top, set it to custom, set my FPS to either 30 or 60, depending on where you're posting it. And for the frame size over here, here's where we can choose vertical. If you're posting on stories, TikTok, and things like that, you'll need the full nine by 16 aspect ratio. For this, we'll be using 1080 wide by 1920 high. 9 by 16. For Instagram posts, however, you'll be using roughly 1080 by 1350, a 4 to 5 ratio. It's mostly square. Because I'm creating for, say, TikTok, I'll start with 1080 by 1920. Everything else here I'm happy with, and I'll click OK. From here, we can start importing video and get editing. Of course, if you're working with a vertical video shot vertically, all you need to do is drag it in and edit it as per usual. However, if you're taking and reframing horizontal content to be vertical, you'll need some idea of what you're doing. Now, of course, you can drag your videos onto your timeline, and if they're horizontal, you'll need to keep your settings on here to keep it vertical. There we go. Of course, this doesn't exactly fit, and we'll have to basically start new. We can click our video here. On the effects controls panel, we can change the scale to match whatever it is here as closely as possible, or zoom in a bit further. Then you can reposition it using the position up here as such and position it any way you like to best fit your frame. Of course, you can double click to drag things around here manually if you find that easier. But for me, it's less precise. Then again, I'm not recording real life things other than say all the way at the end here, even though I am very close to what I was filming. Things like this wouldn't really work when they take up too much of the frame to begin with. When they take up too much of the horizontal frame to begin with, but you can always work around things. We can zoom out and for example, duplicate the video. I'll hold Alt and drag the video up to create another video below it, a simple copy. I can then scale this up, for example, head into effects and grab the Gaussian blur, drag it on, apply some blur, and there we have it. We've now successfully converted our horizontal video into something a bit more suited for vertical. Of course, this isn't exactly the best, but this is a ton of manual effort as with any video editing, really. If you already have a video fully created, there is an easier way to change it into horizontal. I'll make a new sequence here. I've copied in the deity video I recorded the other day for the products they sent me. And as you can see in the main sequence, it's horizontal, it has some editing done to it, and everything's shot for horizontal. But we can convert this to be vertical quite easy. In new versions of Adobe Premiere Pro, if you pay for it, you'll definitely have access to these. You should be able to right-click a sequence and choose Auto Reframe Sequence. I'll pull this out of the folder just to keep things simple. Right-click, Auto Reframe Sequence, and upon clicking so, we can choose the target aspect ratio, 4x5 for Instagram squares. We have actual square up here and vertical 9x16. I'll be choosing this here. There is also horizontal 9x16 for converting vertical to horizontal video. Anyways, we can choose motion tracking, slower motion, default or faster motion for the AI to try and pick out things as effectively as possible. I'll click create and it should auto reframe my sequence as best it can. I'll simply wait for it to finish in the bottom right. This of course can take some time, especially depending on the length of your clip. And there we go. Now that it's done, I've scrolled forwards and clicked on my video here. You can see the auto reframe effect, and it has surprisingly automatically reframed something that is picked out of importance. As you can see, as I'm scrubbing through the timeline here, it's keeping it centered on the object that's taking up most of my screen. I'm not sure what kind of AI wizardry this is, but it did a really good job of keeping things centered, to be honest. In fact, even better than I did while recording this. Of course, you can see the background moving here as I'm moving it around. It even does well in jump cuts. That's great. From here, there's even less effort for you to do as it's automatically reframed most things, which is especially useful for normal horizontal video. If I skip forward to working on my PC here, you can see it's trying, but it's not exactly doing the best. This seems to be off center here. So I would simply select the clip, 
select the auto reframe effect over here and I can drag it around manually myself until it's more centered. Then it should try and keep things tracked, but it is moving around a little bit as context menus and things are popping up. This isn't exactly the best option to show you what it does. Here later on I show a web page and the same thing happens. For these, you may want to try and manually remove the auto reframe effect and instead do motion with the normal motion effect up here, which is disabled now that we have auto reframe on down here. It makes life a lot simpler for videos that aren't screen recordings, such as, case in point, this unboxing over here that came out really well. Beyond that, there's only really one other tip that I can share you, and that's to optimize your window to get the best possible experience. Of course, this all comes down to user preference, but for me, I definitely recommend taking the program preview from this part over here, showing where it's better for horizontal video, clicking this hamburger button, then undock panel to get it separate, grab it at the top, and drag it all the way to the side of your screen, as such, to the lighter bar, not this one over here, otherwise then I'll place it inside of this group, we're placing it all the way on the side to snap to the very far side of our screen. Now we can crush this sideways to be more vertical as such and take up a ton more screen real estate. Now we can shrink everything else here and adjust them as necessary. Maybe I'll put my files down here, my effects up here, make everything a bit bigger including my timeline, fix the audio preview from being way too large, and there we go. This is a much more comfortable workflow, at least for me, when I'm working on vertical video as compared to horizontal video. This is how I would recommend you edit. As for everything else, when we hit Control M to export our sequence, video, etc., everything else is exactly the same. Just make sure that you have the width and height either matched to source or you punch in the numbers down here that you need. Say 1080 by 1920, as such, as it seems to have scaled it down a little bit in the sequence. Then when you're happy with all of your other settings, export it as you usually would. If you exported horizontal video at 10 megabits a second, you should probably do the same thing for vertical video. Everything that you've learned about saving videos is exactly the same, we're just editing them sideways now. Nothing else fancy is happening. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick crash course into editing vertical video. Of course, there is a little bit more that I didn't touch on in the auto reframe, but this crash course should definitely get you started and get you going places when it comes to editing and creating professional vertical videos, while not having to learn tools that you don't already know. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!